Hey everyone, it's Mr. Bologno, and thanks for joining me. Today we're going to look at the artwork of Tim Burton. Tim Burton, in my opinion, has one of the most creative, probably the strangest minds in the entire world. After we learn about them, you're going to do a self-portrait in the style of his work. So, brace yourself, get your art supplies, and get ready next. Before you get started on a self-portrait in a Tim Burton style, I first want to share a short clip that I made on his backstory. You will truly understand why he is so unique and sought after in Hollywood as a director. Check it out. I'm going to be doing a spotlight reading on Tim Burton, Working with Fantasy. This comes from the November 2012 issue of Scholastic Art. From sketch to screen, filmmaker Tim Burton's fantastical films start with his own drawings. These fantastical film characters sprang from the mind of movie director Tim Burton, and they all started in his sketchbook. It is rare to, for a film director to create his own drawings, and the art world took note. In 2009, the Museum of Modern Art in New York City gave Burton a solo show. The exhibit was so popular that it went on a worldwide tour. Now Burton is recognized for both his drawings and his films. Drawing has always been an important part of Burton's life, even in high school. He grew up in Burbank, California, not far from the movie studios that would eventually launch his career. A shy teenager, young Tim spent his time reading the horror stories of Edgar Allan Poe, watching classic horror films, and drawing. He didn't think he was particularly a good artist, but his art teacher encouraged him to keep sketching. Burton attended the California Institute of the Arts, where he studied animation. He learned all aspects of making a film, from designing characters to setting up the perfect shot. These skills landed him a dream job as an animator and storyboard artist at Walt Disney Studios. At Disney, Burton met fellow animator Rick Heinrichs. Both young men thought that the Disney style of animation was at odds with their personal artistic styles. They decided to work together. I'd always been a fan of Tim's own work, Heinrichs told Scholastic Art. I like how his characters were drawn with an economy of line. I wanted to see them three-dimensional. I took it upon myself to make sculptures of his work. In 1982, an executive at Disney gave them $60,000 to make a short stop-motion animation film called Vincent. The two artists have since collaborated on Burton's feature films, The Nightmare Before Christmas and Frank and Weenie. Burton's seemingly simple sketches provide plenty of detail about the visual styles of his films. The drawing for The Nightmare Before Christmas has a similar style. The skeleton Jack's head is a simple caricature of a skull with large, exaggerated eyes, yet his expression is easy to read. The long lines of Jack's body complement his slender figure. The muted palette, or colors, creates a dark tone, even on the colorful Sally. How do Burton's characters change as they become three-dimensional? What kind of fantastical characters can you create? See, now you know why he's a truly unique visionary. Now, we're going to start a self-portrait. What I want you to do is grab your sketchbook and a pencil and I'll go through the steps. Here's my sketchbook. I got pencils. Definitely will need black markers. Um, Tim Burton is known for having a monochromatic look to his work. What that means is just sticking with one color and its shades. So if he's using just black, he's going to use all kinds of variations of grays and a little white. Now, when you start, I want you to start with the head shape. When you look at many of his characters that he designs, big heads, big eyes, skinny necks, really elongated bodies. 
Okay, I mean, look at Jack Skellington, for example. That is a character that is definitely designed by Burton. As I go through the time lapse, you'll notice I will use the slides that I shared with you on Seesaw. I'll start with the head, pick one of these, then I will go to the next slide and pick a set of eyes, make sure they're big. Then I'll pick one of the noses, then I'll pick a mouth, and then I'll go from there and add the details that make it look more like me. All right, enjoy this time-lapse video. Now I could call it a day and say, all right, I'm done with my Tim Burton styled self-portrait. But what I want you to do to finish it up is grab your pencil again, and then go in and shade around certain edges. So check it out on this time-lapse, and then I'll talk to you afterwards. If you decide to use any color, keep it to a limited palette because Tim Burton rarely used bright colors in any of his work. And here you have it, my Tim Burton styled self-portrait. Hey, thanks to all of you for watching and joining in. If you're watching this with your art teacher, remember you can always ask them any of your questions and they'll have the answers for you. Or if you're watching this on your own, you can contact them on Seesaw. All right, everyone, take care, be well. I'll see you another time.